In 2005, I had the blessing to serve for a year with the Salesian Sisters in Ecuador. In praying over today's readings, my memory kept going back to my time there. It's where and when I first became familiar with the term missionary disciple. The term helped me to answer the question, am I a real missionary? It was there with the sisters that I learned and experienced what being a disciple is, which is at the heart of today's readings. For as long as I can remember, I felt the desire to be a missionary, to go to a faraway land and help the poor, which in itself is not a bad vision, but a bit too romanticized. In 2005, my wish became a reality when I had the opportunity to go and serve for a year with the Salesian Sisters. I was finally going to be a missionary. However, not too long after my arrival, I began to have doubts about using the title. I was working daily side by side with the sisters and priests and lady, providing basic and, and religious education for both children and adults, you know, providing assistance and centers um, for children found living on the streets and, and all sorts of amazing work. But for me, I knew it was temporary. One year and I was done, back to my life in the United States. How could I place myself on the same level of these good people who had no arrival and departure date. I decided I wasn't a missionary, but a volunteer. That is, until Sor Rosita, the superior of the house I was living, approached me one evening. She asked me why I had been introducing myself as La Voluntaria. I explained my reasoning, and after sighing, like only a sister can sigh, she explained to me that of course I was a missionary. In fact, I was a missionary disciple and that I was already one before coming to Ecuador and would have been even if I had never come at all. To be a missionary disciple, she said, is to be a believer who puts two things together, my experience of Christ and then to witness to Christ, regardless of my current location. In the first reading, we recall the Passover, which God says is the first month. It's the new beginning and a beginning that is remembered every year. By becoming the symbolic Passover lamb himself, plus the foot washing servant in tonight's gospel, Jesus makes the movement to the human and the personal very clear and quite concrete. Holy Thursday is a day of very good ritual that gathers all the absolutely essential but often avoided messages, necessary suffering, real sharing, divine intimacy, and loving servanthood. Messages that the past year has provided for us to embrace or to continue to ignore. The psalmist prays, our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. At first, this was read mainly as a text on martyrdom, but later it was increasingly transformed into a Eucharistic text. Christ is the first martyr. He gave his life in a context of hatred and falsehood, but he transformed this passion and thus also this context into the Eucharist, into a thanksgiving feast. We raise the chalice of salvation. In the second reading, Jesus creates the Eucharist beginning the church and Easter as the beginning of the church year. It's an important beginning and one we remember every time we go to mass and share in the Eucharist. We find here the oldest testimony of the Eucharistic celebration. Paul transmits the tradition that he received from the disciples of Jesus while showing that the Eucharist is not a celebration that remembers a past event, but is open to the future, to all times, because in it we announce the death of the Lord and the saving work of God that is offered to all in all ages. The words of Jesus have been preserved for us to understand the meaning of the shared bread and cup. Jesus left the community of his disciples the possibility of always living the reality of a new covenant with God. The relationship between the covenant and the kingdom already had an important tradition, but in the action of Jesus, it acquired a, a transcendental and original importance for his followers. Did the apostles who participate in the Last Supper understand the meaning of the words that came from the lips of Christ? Maybe not. 
Do we understand the meaning of Christ's words when we participate in the Lord's Supper? In all humility, in the light of our daily experience, I believe that we can't even dare to say a maybe no, but a simple no. We do not yet fully understand them. The gospel verse says, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. We will witness once again on Good Friday that Jesus loved us enough to die for us. We see in today's gospel that even though he is teacher and master in God, he still serves. The new commandment of love is a gift Christ gives us on Holy Thursday. Before the Last Supper, the Lord performs basically the function of a slave. God kneels before man to serve him. The one who is purity and beauty washes the dirt of sin. The new commandment of love is no longer a norm, a law. It is therefore not an obligation. Rather, it is the response to the love that God has for us. If God loves us in this way, serving us to the point of giving his life, in the same way we must love others. And by this example, God tells us what it means to love one another as I loved you. We must serve, not stand above or apart, not pontificate, but be there in the trenches with others. Jesus gave his body and blood, rinsed their dirty, smelly feet, touched them. Jesus loved us by being born a human baby, growing up, healing people, helping people, knowing people, and then dying for us all. We can show our love for him by showing our love for each other. We too can heal people, help, know people, and through that, know and love God. Today, we thank God for the gift of the sacrament of love, and we ask he enable us to recognize the love that he has for us, to grant us to feel truly loved by God, kneeling before us to wash our feet so that we too can truly live this same love. This evening, we will leave the Blessed Sacrament in that special place that we have prepared to accompany Christ, remembering the moment of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Let us not leave him alone. Let's not fall asleep like the disciples, but let's remain awake with him while waiting for the celebration of the Lord's passion and death. Thank you.